He was the Haitian sensation. He played across three decades of the ATP World Tour. It's 27 years since he turned pro, but now Ronald Agenor's back, this time on the ATP Champions Tour. This is my first event in seven years. This is my first ATP Champion Tour event, so it's absolutely great. I'm having the best time of my life, and uh, I just hope that I can play uh, a few more of those. It's really exciting. There's still some pressure about doing well. You know, it's not, it's, it's serious, you know, so, and I see the guys are very fit. Um, so I had a first round, I was like, is this the Champions Tour or I'm back to uh, starting a new tennis career. I got some blisters, cramps and stuff like that, but uh, it's really exciting actually. Agenor's 19 year tennis career began in France. It's where he grew to idolize two men in particular. I mean, there's two uh, that really were, were my inspiration was uh, Borg, who I was just amazed about his concentration and uh, his focus. Uh, his precision, and then Atherash. Um, actually, my first racket was uh, was a head racket, uh, Atherash signature. So I was really uh, these were my two role models uh, growing up in the game. Born in Morocco, growing up in the Congo, and then Bordeaux, Agenor's early years were the perfect preparation for life on tour. I think it was um, again a, a fantastic experience. Uh, experience uh, traveling to almost like a different country every week. Um, uh, so again, experiencing different cultures, different people, languages. Uh, for, so it's a unique experience, and I think this is what, what tennis is about when you have a professional career compared to other sports where you're just in the same country. Uh, tennis gives you the opportunity uh, to travel the whole world. So this, this is really like, it was your job, and, um, but I feel like um, if I was to do it again, I would do it again because it was such a great experience for me. Despite a quarter-final appearance at Roland Garros and three ATP World Tour titles, his most cherished memories revolve around his homeland. Well, the first big one, I think, was uh, the gold medal that I won for Haiti at the Central American Games in Cuba in 1982 because um, that was not a professional tournament, it was just amateur. and. When I came back to Haiti um, after the event, I had all this crowd waiting for me at the airport, and I, I didn't know what was going on. And they were like, I was like a hero all of a sudden. Ashenor became a national icon. He also sustained a memorable career across three decades. Thanks, he says, to one person in particular. At that specific time, it was my my fiance at that time. Her name is Tanya, and she was she's my wife uh, now. We have uh, two kids, and she really pushed me uh, to to keep going and play. Uh, and I did that for um, until I was like close to 38. So I was still rank around top 115 in the world. So uh, she was the reason why I played uh, that long. Heads. The Hit for Haiti charity exhibition at the BNP Paribas Open helped to raise one million US dollars for earthquake relief. And for Agenor, the response of the tennis world was overwhelming. The ATP is doing uh, something great. I think the players, uh, actually I want to thank uh, Roger Federer for doing what he did and all the players that are involved. Thank you very much because the people of Haiti really need, they need help. They needed help before. But more than ever, I mean, everything is destroyed. So uh, we went for, from a, a bad situation to, to the worst possible. The Hit for Haiti appeal has inspired Agenor. He now aims to help the children of the country he calls home. I hope that I will be um, in the near future uh, invited by the current or the next Haitian government to develop sports in Haiti. I think this is something that um, could be great uh, beside giving them basics. I think uh, developing sports in Haiti for the youth, it's, uh, it would be something phenomenal. And, uh, and hopefully I can play more of those uh, uh, ATP Champions Tour. This is like the cherry on the cake for me. This is just, uh, I'm really um, so happy that I was able to play this event and, um, and I hope it's not gonna be the last one. <laughs> His focus may have changed, but one thing remains the same. Ronald Agenor's enduring passion for tennis. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, we stay stateside as we bring you a special behind the scenes report from the Sony Ericsson Open in Miami. 
And we speak to Holland's Raymond Schleuter. Personal tragedy took him away from the game. Now he's fighting his way back into the top 50. Until then, don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news. See you next week.